When we talk about using our strings, a lot of it's based on manipulating the ball, coming down the ball, spinning the ball, revolutions. But this one video is the exact opposite. This is the one time to consider using your strings for pure flatness, to be able to just get that racket on that ball as flat as possible, and I'll talk about the reasons why in a moment. So it's a bit of an upside down one, this one, and I think it's definitely appropriate to talk about, because in this situation, if you were to cut and open up that racket face, it would definitely not have the effect or the desired effect that you would want. It's the situation whereby you're in the front of the court, you've got a bit of a loose ball, maybe you've taken your opponent and they've just about scrambled it up, and that ball is sitting nice and easy. There's something, it's in there, your opponent might be in, in a position, or out of position, but in a place whereby you can expose them, and it's about flying onto that ball, it's about extending and reaching and flattening that racket face just so you can get that ball hard, quick, fast, and right out in front. And that's what I've talked about before in regard to contact points. The further forward your contact point is, the flatter the racket tends to go. It's very difficult to get out and reach for that ball, open that face. That's fine if you do want to hit the ball up, but if you're wanting to attack, that just doesn't cut it. So this is the one time whereby you get on the ball early and everything's at a full extension and a full reach and it's a bit of a flat bat. A simple way to put this, it's a bit of a calculated hack. <laughs> you know, you've got that opening, you've got that position, why not get on that ball early and just get it into the open space? So I'll give you a quick little demonstration. If it's on the front forehand, the ball's come up, my opponent might be on the tee, he might have done a high bows and come to the tee, but I just want to get that ball low, flat, and essentially what it does, it skids that ball through, it really whips that ball through. There's no bounce, there's no height on it, but because that ball's sitting up nice and loose and I get on with that flat pattern early, it really keeps that ball low. So for example, something like this will come in. Ball goes in, I'm in there and I'm just... And look how much I've closed that. I've really turned and closed it and my grip has gone into that position. I've gone there and I've prioritized that flatness. One more time, ball goes up, I'm in there really low on that front wall, skids, nothing my opponent can do from that if I've got that right position. It is a lot more difficult on the backhand and you, you can lose quite a bit of control by flattening it. So I would say, yes, you can do it on the backhand, but it's not as, I suppose it's not as effective on that backhand as the forehand. Yes, do it, but there's something about that forehand, that real meaty flatness, whereby you just get in low, hard, skidding that ball down, it's in there, and now purposely close it, and I haven't changed my grip there at the end. If you notice that, completely in my palm, a little bit lower down, completely flattening that face out. So definitely think about this one, have a little go at it, play around with it. What I tend to find is this one is way too common. That's why I don't wanna do a huge amount on it. I wanted to talk about using the strings for manipulation and spin and cut, because I see this one common, but it's also important to understand that it's part of using your strings, but using your strings in very much a, a rebounding type of way for pace, for acceleration, and for injecting that ball into open space.